Okay, thanks for the introduction. Uh, today I'm going to present our work on hybrid system verification called Driver. It's a collaboration with Bolonti, my advisor, Professor Shan Mitra, and Professor Mahesh Vishwanathan. So in textbooks, if we uh, look at the control systems, they are typically described using differential equations like dx dt equal to f of x and the input u. The differential equations first came to existence by Sir Newton in his 17th century work. So in our community, this standard hybrid and switch automaton that is used for verification and synthesis inherits this world view. This differential equation way of modeling control system can bring us a lot of benefits. For example, in some cases, we can compute the rich set. However, in reality, the control system that the engineers are working on a little bit different. They are sometimes built using these modeling tools called, uh, for, for example, MATLAB Simulink. And if you open it, it's going to be like these components connected with each other. It, some of the components can be described using lookup tables, and some others are a subcomponent. So it is difficult or sometimes impossible to extract differential equations from these control systems. So in this work, we are going to reconcile these two worlds. Instead of dressing about which, um, so there's a common aphorism saying uh, all the models are wrong, but some are useful. Instead of dressing about which model is useful and which is simply wrong, Today, we are hoping driver can help you gain some serenity to accept the models as they are. So we are going to bring this new view of knowledge in hybrid systems. First, we have the complete information of mode switches. For example, in the graph here, different color means different mode, and the switch information between the modes is clear to us. However, for each mode, we will only have executable access to the mode dynamics. That means the dynamic is actually a black box for us. We can only set the initial configuration and get executions that represent the state of the system. So together, the driver's executable hybrid model is going to be like we start from the first mode. The system is, is going to follow certain dynamic. At a certain point, it's going to switch to another mode and follow another dynamic, so on and so forth for the entire hybrid system. So using this kind of view, how can we uh, model this autonomous driving car, the blue one that is trying to merge the right lane. So the blue car on the top is our autonomous car. It's trying to merge the right lane. If the right car is nice, it's going to leave some space so the blue car can merge in, in front of it. So in this case, the right car is going to stay in the cruise mode but the blue car is going to go through this cruise, accelerate, turn right, then get back to the cruise mode. However, if when the blue car is trying to do the merge, the red car starts to accelerate, the blue car will have to decelerate and merge behind of the red car. So the entire merging of the cars the, uh, about mode switches is clear to us. But for the underlying vehicle dynamic, we can use any vehicle simulator, and it can be a black box. So before introducing what can we do using driver, let's set up the semantics first. For the complete information of switching structure, we're going to use this transition graph. So for simplicity of description, I'm going to uh, assume this transition graph is a directed acyclic graph. And the mode switches is going to depend on time. That means, for example, from the left the middle green mode, we are going to stay in this mode for some time until uh, a, interval a, a time interval A and B and go, back, uh, go to the red mode above. We can see this kind of transition graph is a special kind of uh, one clock time automaton. And we say the trace of the transition graph is this sequence of alternatives of mode and transition time. For the uh, black box, we are actually going to get some trajectory that describes the state of the system for each mode. 
So the black box itself can be seen as a labeled trajectory set. Together, a hybrid system is this tuple of mode, initial set, graph, and the black box. A state of the hybrid system is a point in the state space labeled by its mode. And we define the reach set as all the reachable states uh, for the entire transition graph from the initial set for every vertex and at any time. We can also restrict the reach set for a certain single vertex. OK, so with this uh, semantics, I'm going to show you the power of driver. First, we will see some proof rules, and later the bounded model checking. And finally, I'm going to talk about some several case studies. The first proof rule is called compositional analysis for unbounded time. We see these two transition graphs, G1 and G2, are composable if Look at G1, the terminal vertex has the same mode as the initial vertex of G2. So the composed graph will be like you merge these two vertices together. You can also concatenate as many as G2 to this graph. So we will get a transition graph that has unbounded time trace. We have proved that for this G1 composed with G2, if the terminal vertex of G2, that's the B vertex here, if it's reach, the reach set of B is contained in the initial uh, vertex of G2, that's the A vertex here, then the reach set of the simple version, G1 composed to only one G2, is going to contain the reach set of this unbounded version. So in this case, if your system transition graph has some regular pattern, we can only anal analyze the one that is pretty simple, G1 composed with only one G2. The second reasoning proof is called um, behavior containment. We see these two graphs, G1 and G2, has trace containment if every trace of G1 is going to be contained in the trace of G2. So this is, can be checked by a standard forward simulation between graphs. We also uh, define the trajectory containment if every trajectory of black box 1 is going to be contained in the trajectory of black box 2. So with trace containment and trajectory containment, further, we require that the uh, initial set of, G of one is going to be contained in the initial set of two. We can prove the reach set of the more complicated version is going to contain is going to contain in the reach set of the abstraction version G two. So for the complicated graph, you can always extract uh, uh, get some abstraction ver abstraction version and uh, analyze only this abstraction version, which contains the complete information of the complicated one. So the major part of driver is, is doing safety bounded verification. The safety problem is defined as following. From the initial set theta and as if given a safe region, we want to see whether the rich set of the system has intersection with unsafe. If they are disjoint, we call it safe. And if some trajectory goes into unsafe, we will see the system is unsafe with the trajectory as counterexample. There's a fairly straightforward way to do this called simulation-driven approach. I'm going to show you how to use the simulation-driven approach to do the safety verification for a single vertex of the transition graph. So from the initial set theta, we first find a representative state and simulate from that state. Then we generalize this single simulation trajectory to a tube, such that this tube conservatively contain all the trajectories starting from the initial set theta. Next, we are going to check this tube. Uh, because this tube is over approximation, if it's disjoint with unsafe, the system is safe from initial set theta. But if it, there is overlap, we will have to do some refinement, that is to split the initial set theta to smaller sites and si essentially do the similar thing for each of the smaller ones. Simulate, generalize, and check the safety of each one of them. So it's a pretty simple method. But the question is, how should we generalize this single simulation trajectory to get a tube that contains all the other trajectories starting from the initial set? We are going to use this concept called discrepancy function. Discrepancy function bounds the distance between two neighboring trajectories using a function of only its initial state and time. 
So given a single simulation trajectory, if at any time t, we can bloat the simulation trajectory using the value of this equivalency function, we're going to get this tube that uh, over approximates the reset from a neighborhood of uh, tau 1, that's a single simulation trajectory. Uh, a neighborhood of tau 1 0, the tau 1 0 is the initial state of tau 1 at time 0. We have a sequence of previous work on computing the discrepancy function, but they all heavily rely on the differential equation f and uh, the derivative of f, we call the Jacobian matrix. But here, we, we only have executable access to the system. There may not be differential equations. How can we solve this problem? We are going to learn a discrepancy function from data. So first, let's give the discrepancy function some shape. For example, the global exponential function. That means for a pair of trajectories tau 1 and tau 2, at any time t, the distance between tau 1 and tau 2 is upper bounded by the initial difference, multiply constant k, then exponential function e to the gamma t. With this template, now we see the goal is to compute the parameters gamma and k. So how to get those? Let's do some math. Take the logarithm and rearrange. We will see at any time, log of some function of the trajectory is less or equal to gamma t plus log k. So looks like because we have the black uh, box system that we can get uh, executions, for any time t, we can get the value of the trajectory. So gamma and log k here provides us a linear inequality. This inspires us to use this concept of learning linear separator to find the gamma and k. For a subset S on the plane, a linear separator is a pair A and B that defines a line such that the subset lies on only one side of the line. There is a very simple algorithm to find this line. First, we draw k samples from the subset according to a distribution. Then we find the line such that all the sample points lies on the one, one side of the line. So it's very simple and straightforward. From a, a standard pack learning concept, we can prove that with arbitrary positive number epsilon delta, if the sample number k is large enough, then with high probability, 1 minus delta, the error of this learned linear separator is very small, less than epsilon. And the error is defined as a measure of the states that are misclassified by the linear separator. So here we can see learning the gamma and log k is the same as learning the a and b here. So essentially, we can use the same algorithm to get those. Among all the possible gamma and k's, we want the one that can give us the tightest over approximation. So that means we are going to solve the following linear programming problem. Minimize the volume of the rich set such that for every, every two pair of the tra sampled trajectories, this inequality defined by the discrepancy function hold. We have used a million pair of trajectories as testing set and show that among all the case studies we have, using only 10 training trajectories, we can get the learned discrepancy function with accuracy more than 96. And with 20 trajectories, the accuracy is more than 99.9. .9, and in most cases, we are seeing 100. In driver, you have more options about the shape of this discrepancy function. We can have piecewise exponential polynomial, um, piecewise polynomial. So with this learned discrepancy function, and the simulation-driven approach, we can compute us, uh, the rich set over approximation for a single vertex. The algorithm for the whole transition graph is going to proceed according to a topologically sorted order. That is, from the initial vertex 1, we are going to compute the rich set of 1. Then for the successor of 1, that's vertex 2, because we are going to transit from 1 to 2 within time a to b. So we restrict the rich set of 1 to a to b and use this restricted set as an initial set for vertex b. And do the same thing, similar thing, for another successor of 1, that's vertex 5. Next, we move to the next uh, vertex 2 and do similar stuff and so on and so forth until we reach the terminal vertex. 
So the refinement is not going to only refine the initial set that is going to split the initial set to smaller set. We're also going to split the transition time interval to smaller intervals. We have proved that with this learned this, if the learned discrepancy function is correct, then this algorithm is sound and relatively complete. So we recall that the discrepancy function will have error decrease with, the num with more and more number of sa samples. But of course, it's going to take more time. And empirical results showed with very small amount of training trajectories, we can get very high accurate learned discrepancy function. So finally, I'm going to show you a few of case studies. The first three rows are all uh, different automotive manu maneuvers. You can see that if you have a black box for your vehicle as a vehicle simulator, you can easily construct a different kind of transition graphs to describe your own scenario. For example, the auto passing, the merging on different road, and uh, even more complicated one. You and you, then you can use driver to verify the safety of your scenario. You can also use driver to visualize the uh, reach set of your system. For example, all possible positions of your vehicle. We also applied it on the engine control system. This is a sequence of uh, powertrain control system proposed by the model design group from Toyota. This, it's uh, like different powertrain control systems with different uh, fidelity, but on the higher level, they all have four modes, including startup, normal, sensor fail, and the transition or the switch between these different modes is going to depend on time or user behavior. There's a simplest version of the powertrain control system that can be described using differential equation. We reported the verification of that one in our CAF 2015's work. Here, we are able to verify the safety of the second most complicated powertrain model. It cannot be described using differential equation, and uh, we are treating it as a black box. The third example is a um, uh, transmission system. It has four, five different modes from gear one to gear five, and the switch between those modes is going to be controlled by your automatic transmission controller. And this one is actually from a Simulink uh, demo. Uh, for all these case studies, we verify the safety of them for different transition graphs and from different initial set. We can see the running time is typically within minutes. Actually, most of the time we use to generate the sample trajectories. So to conclude, we propose a fresh perspective for modeling hybrid system at this combination of white box transition graph and black box simulator. We, con we uh, conducted a sequence of case studies on different um, automotive maneuvers and control systems in the vehicle. This new way of modeling enables types of static dynamic uh, analysis. For the black box, we can uh, learn a discrepancy function that provides high probabilistic guarantee. With this, we can do the bounded safety verification that provides sound and uh, completeness guarantee. We also provide several proof rules, including analysis for unbounded time using sequential composition and the simplification of the models using behavior containment. So in the future, we're looking for more expressive models for the white box part, not only the autom uh, time automata. And uh, we are also trying to modify our tool to see how it fits into this research of synthesis and monitoring. With this and the references, that's all um, my talk for today. Thank you. Questions? While we are waiting for other questions, I do have a question. Mm -hmm. How does uh, your method compare with, for instance, things people do in system identification, where they're trying to learn the model? I mean, they're, they're trying to learn differential equations, and you're trying to learn the di discrepancy function. I think it can be seen as like a special kind of system identific identification. We are, in general, learning the shape of the reach set, not the differential equation itself, because we think sometimes the system just cannot be described using differential equations. 